Hello and welcome to this webinar on KVM Trends where we'll discuss some of the key developments we see happening in the KVM market today and over the next few years. My name is John Hickey, and I am the Senior Director for the KVM Business in Black Box, responsible for product management and R&D for our KVM portfolio. I have deep roots in KVM with over 15 years in the KVM and virtualization business. I led the creation and development of KVM platforms such as AMX and HMX during my eight years in Avacent as VP of Engineering Strategy. I then founded and led Cloudium Systems delivering integrated KVM and virtualization solutions to our customers for six years until Cloudium was acquired by Blackbox nearly one year ago. Well, enough about me. Now let's delve into what's happening in the world of high-performance KVM. The KVM market is composed of multiple segments such as rack tray KVM, desktop KVM, server KVM over IP, and high-performance KVM. Rack tray KVM is typically used to access a group of servers in a rack or enclosure in the data center. Desktop KVM switches allow a desktop operator to switch between multiple computer sources at the push of a button while using a single keyboard, mouse, or monitor. The trends in these two segments are generally linked to changes in workstation and server peripherals. They are moving towards display port video and adding support for USB 3.0. The server KVM over IP segment provides a remote KVM session via web browser or software client. They are used for occasional or emergency access to servers. This is a market in decline and seeing little or to no real innovation as IT moves to embedded KVM or other technologies for this application. During this webinar, I will be focused on high performance KVM. High performance KVM is where the user experiences the same performance as if he or she was sitting directly in front of the workstation or server. This is the area of the high performance business that is growing strongly and seeing significant levels of innovation. I will start this webinar with an overview of the KVM market, where it is today and what people are buying. Then I will outline the key trends we see coming to this sector over the next three years. Next, I will discuss how high performance KVM is evolving to support these trends using black box products as examples. Finally, I will spend some time on one increasingly important trend, that of system management, which is being driven by the need for efficient and effective control of KVM and AV infrastructures, especially those requiring 24 by 7 operation. At the end of this, I hope you will have gained a better insight in how the KVM market is evolving and how it is changing its role in business operations. As I have said, the focus of this webinar is on high-performance KVM, which essentially is an extension of the desktop with the goal of providing the same experience to a user as if they were sitting at the workstation or server, even though they, they may be accessing that workstation or server across the campus or even across the country. They provide high-quality video with resolutions up to 4K with no visible artifacts or color loss. High-performance KVM systems are composed of transmitters and receivers connected by switches. There are basically two types of high-performance systems classified by the switching network they use. They are proprietary direct connect and IP-based. Proprietary direct connect are custom networks designed by individual companies, typically using programmable cross-point switches for interconnection. Blackbox's DCX and DKM families are, are examples of direct connect high-performance KVM products. IP-based uh, high-performance KVM leverage standard IP for their network, typically using 1 gig and 10 gig Ethernet switches. Blackbox's Agility and Invisi PC families are examples of high-performance KVM over IP products. Looking back three to four years, over 95% of the high-performance KVM market was proprietary direct connect. This has now declined to about 80% market share as IP-based high-performance KVM have grown in performance to match proprietary direct connect systems. We expect this growth in market share for IP-based high-performance KVM to grow, to continue to grow over the next three to four years as enterprises look to consolidate as much networking systems uh, to be based on IP as possible. Just as we've seen the move from SDI to IP and telephony to voice over IP, we will see the move from proprietary KVM to IP as well. This will be evolutionary as in other markets the trend will take place over many years. The market for high-performance KVM is growing strongly, 
estimated to be 10 to 11% annually over the next three to four years. People are connecting their KVM systems to workstations and servers, so naturally the I.O. on KVM systems evolved to support the latest video and USB standards. Today, about 70% of connections are to DVI-based systems. Approximately 20% are to VGA-based and 10% to others, including DisplayPort and HDMI. Today, we are seeing a high growth rate for, on DisplayPort connectivity, admittedly from a very low base. Within three years, we expect to see DisplayPort to grow to 30 to 40% of new connections with a decline in DVI and VGA. HDMI will also see growth, but this is mainly for uh, AV connectivity systems and is less important in the KVM space. What is driving this growth in high-performance KVM, and why do people buy high-performance KVM? The key driver is what I call virtual access, basically enabling many users access multiple remote computers when they need to from their, their work area. They share resources in a virtual access manner. Often this virtual access has become key to the workflow of broadcasters, designers, air traffic control, traders through to emergency response and government, government agencies, as it allows access to multiple resources quickly with increasing resilience and reducing costs. Resilience can be increased as KVM allows immediate switching to a backup resource in case of a computer failure. And costs are reduced in several ways, such as the sharing of an expensive machine or license licenses in an efficient manner among many people. So what are the key trends that will shape high-performance KVM over the next three years? I see three major drivers, higher quality video, the transition to virtualization, and workflow optimization. The move to higher quality video has been a constant theme in high-performance KVM, and over the next three years it will be no different. There will be an increasing move to 4K and even 8K resolution, though HD video will remain the majority of the connections. Also, we will see an increasing use of 10-bit color and the start of 12-bit color, especially in the post-production areas. The transition to virtual sources is new to high-performance KVM space and follows the trend of virtualization impacting all aspects of the IT infrastructure. We see businesses moving applications from physical servers into virtual machines. For example, broadcasters are moving content distribution and playout machines to virtual machines. I often see legacy applications, ones running on hardware that needs to be retired, move to virtual machines to enable the continuous support of that application. This application may be a monitoring application with low CPU requirements to high-end simulation applications with intensive CPU and graphical needs. High-performance KVM needs to support access to these applications in virtual machines as well as to applications running in workstations and servers in a seamless manner. Workflow optimization is where the KVM system is used to increase the efficiency of a service, a process, or an operation. Here we can think of a service or as an, op an application running on a server or a virtual machine. An example of such workflow optimization is the use of pooling. Pooling is where a group of resources, such as workstations, are grouped together. A user connects to the pool rather than to an individual device. When a user wants to connect to the pool, the pool determines which device the user gets allocated to. This helps the workflow and resilience. For example, it avoids the user having to figure out what to do when an individual server goes offline. The pool automatically reroutes them to a suitable resource that is online. Workflow optimization includes the addition of APIs to allow external control of high-performance systems. Increasingly, IT managers are looking to minimize the learning curve for operators and are adding touch panels such as black box control bridge to high-performance KVM. They are leveraging these APIs to control the configuration and operation of the KVM system by simply touching an icon. This touch can cause multiple actions to be performed, such as uh, switch the station to a new source, rearrange the video that is displayed on a video wall, or resetting the configuration in an outside broadcast truck. Programmable keypads such as X keys similarly are being used to avoid operators learning hotkeys typically used in, in high performance KVM equipment. Enhanced uh, touch panel support in general will be core to high performance KVM over the next few years, as more and more applications will use touch rather than a keyboard and mouse. So touch panel sharing, support for switching to a new target through a touch panel will be important. Other important trends will be the move to USB 3.0 to support faster file transfer and increasing standardization on IP as I previously discussed. 
and the increased need for 24 by 7 operations with the intended need for high reliability and advanced system management. Later in this webinar, I will discuss system management in more depth. Now let's look at how some different market sectors are driving these trends. First, we see in broadcast and post-production a drive for 4K and even 8K support along with the need for 10-bit color. Defense and Federal are increasingly using visualization, which is driving their need for larger screens and hence 4K as well. Also, their increased focus on analytics is driving virtualization and data crunching. Of course, by their very nature, the defense and federal markets are driving security, both in certification to new NIAP and other standards, as well as IP security. Industrial facilities are leading the trend towards IP, with a strong focus on leveraging their industrial-grade Ethernet network infrastructure to support high-performance KVM. And all sectors seem to be increasing the use of touch panels and have a desire to integrate KVM sisters systems tighter into their workflow. Similarly, virtualization is a factor across all sectors. Now I will use Blackbox portfolio of high-performance KVM solutions to highlight how these trends are being implemented in high-performance KVM products. I will focus on DKM as an example of Direct Connect high-performance KVM and Invisa PC as an example of high-performance KVM over IP. I will give a brief overview of them and then I highlight how they are evolving to support these trends DKM is an example of a modern proprietary direct connect high performance KVM system. It is composed of receivers, transmitters, and proprietary switches. The switch comes in several variants, from fixed format to modular chassis, scaling from eight ports up to 288 ports. DKM supports bidirectional signal distribution of high definition video, audio, and USB over CADEX cables and multi-mode and single mode fiber. The modular chassis can support multiple flavors of I.O. ports and switching backplanes. DKM supports the key trend of high video quality with the recent addition of 4K60 receiver and transmitters to the system, providing full 4K resolution at 60 frames per second, along with their ability to support 10-bit color. The multiple layers of redundancy in DKM at the link, or sorry, at the endpoint, the link, and the routing levels support the needs of 24 by 7 operations and the addition of an external API allows it to be integrated into workflow optimization using touch panels such as Control Bridge to simplify operations. One of DKM's core strengths is its modularity. DKM is highly configurable to allow it to be tailored to a specific customer requirement. The chassis has its multiple I.O. cards. The transmitter and receivers can also be customized. A customer can choose from DVI, both single link and dual link, HDMI, DisplayPort, and VGA as its video connection. This can be combined with different flavors of USB, from basic USB HID to full USB 2.0, and soon to be added USB 3.0. Similarly, the transmitters, and, the transmitters and receivers can have various flavors of audio added, from basic PC quality audio to 5.1 and 7.1 audio. So DKM is evolving to support the key trends of high, quality, high video quality, workflow optimization, faster file transfer, and 24 by 7 operation. Invisa PC is an example of a high performance KVM over IP platform. It is the latest addition to the black box portfolio. It delivers seamless integration of the physical and virtual worlds with its integration of IP based KVM and virtualization technology. It is designed to enable a smooth transition from physical devices such as dedicated servers to a hybrid world of physical and virtual nodes as more workloads move to virtual machines. This integration of KVM and virtualization provides future proofing for an infrastructure investment by enabling the user to migrate workloads from dedicated servers to virtual machines at their own pace without needing to replace or upgrade the KVM system. Invisa PC has an advanced video codec to allow operation across wide area networks as well as LANs, increasing the scale of the KVM system to span multiple sites or even countries. Invisa PC is architected to have no single point of failure and, is coupled, and coupled with Blackbox's advanced system manager, Boxilla, it can proactively deliver on 24 by 7 operations. The Invisa PC family shares common characteristics of high performance KVM over IP products, high quality video, operation over standard IP networks, 
and support of various USB peripherals. InvisiPC supports all types of USB peripherals, headsets, printers, touch panels, scanners, and smart card readers. It can operate on 100 megabit Ethernet networks or across Wi-Fi, as well as standard gigabit networks, which is a bit unique for high-performance KVM products. As customers look to select a platform, they use various requirements to determine which product fits their needs best. Among them are video resolution supported, bandwidth required on the network, video and audio sharing capabilities, ability to pool transmitters and virtual machines, and the security features of a platform, and of course, cost. The key is what is important for deployment and what, is, what it needs to do, and how various KVM options, whether direct connect or IP based, can make this more efficient. An example of a deployment of a high performance KVM over IP is shown in the diagram using Invisa PC. There are transmitters and receivers connected by standard IP network. There is, a, there is normally a manager to provide central management. For Invisa PC, this is provided by Boxilla, Black Box's KVM and AVIT manager. A unique aspect of Invisa PC is that it also enables connection to virtual machines from the receiver. Both Windows and Linux virtual machines on Microsoft, Citrix, and VMware based systems. It provides an external API to allow integration with external controllers for workflow management as well as embedded support for pooling. Invisa PC shows the evolution of high performance KVM over IP with its support for high quality video, transition to virtual sources, workflow optimization, leveraging of the IP network, and its use uh, and its facilities to enable 24 by 7 operation. An increasing trend is the use of mixed KVM platforms in a customer configuration. This is where multiple products from different families are combined together to provide a solution for a customer. An example of this is shown in the diagram where a direct connect system such as DKM is connected to a high performance KVM over IP system such as Invisa PC to provide access to virtual machines to DKM based receivers. Alternatively, we have seen users leveraging Invisa PC to provide access over WANs to DKM attached servers. This mix adds to the challenge of managing across different types of platforms and infrastructures. This is where system management comes in, and this is the focus of the rest of this webinar. System management is more than device management. It is focused on how to deliver a customer objective from end to end, such as user latency, rather than looking at an individual device. Device management can be considered just an aspect of system management. The goal of, the, of KVM and AVIT system management is to enable central discovery, configuration, control, and monitoring of the KVM and AVIT infrastructure. Discovery is the process of finding and adding components to the system manager. This can be done on an individual site or across multiple sites. This obviously includes the KVM and AV components, typically receivers and transmitters, but also the networking components to interconnect them, the power sources, the servers, and virtual machines. The ultimate goal of KVM and AVIT management is to link all these infrastructure components together to achieve the end user objective, be it display a particular source on a video wall or create a low latency editing session for a graphic designer for an Avid project. System management needs to, be, needs to have easy to use mechanisms to discover the infrastructure components, add them to the managed domain, to apply common performance rules across multiple components and to monitor achievement of these performance goals. This requires system management and not just device management. What does system management mean and how does this differ to device management? Device management is an element of system management as the KVM and AVIT manager needs to configure individual devices, but more is required. System management incorporates all components required for a system function, while device management is focused on an individual device. A device management approach leads to multiple individual device managers needing to be used to configure a system. The performance management and monitoring is from a user perspective in system management, while device management by its very nature is focused on the performance of an individual device. For example, latency across video distribution is composed of the latency in the transmitter for video encoding, plus the latency across the network components, 
and then the latency for video decode and receiver. To confirm and fix latency issues, say uh, trying to meet a spec of 30 milliseconds or less, a measurement across the transmitter, receiver, and network components is required, particularly when trying to pinpoint when an issue arises. Is the problem in the receiver, the transmitter, or the network, or where in the network? System management allows effective monitoring and analysis of such issues in a way that device management cannot. Essentially, system management enables orchestration across multiple devices to create the user experience, whether in the single site or in multiple sites of an enterprise. This often makes it easier for integrators to control and monitor multiple customer sites from a single pane of glass. This is the vision of system management, and over the last year, we have seen various vendors bringing out products to address the, the aspects of this, this vision, and a roadmap of how they will evolve their products to align with this vision. Blackbox, Boxilla, KVM, and AVIT system management is a trailblazer in this area. Typically, system management delivers most value for large to medium deployments, deployments with 20 to 30 or more devices to manage. Obviously, smaller installations can benefit from advanced system management. Just the smaller the deployment, the less moving parts to manage. A system manager should have automatic and manual mechanism to discover the components to be managed. The wider set of components supported, the better. As no one vendor typically supplies all the components, a system manager needs to support third-party devices. Typically, uh, Cisco network components need to be supported as they're so widely deployed as well as Microsoft and Linux-based Linux servers. System management for KVM and AVIT does not attempt to replace Cisco or other device managers, but to complement them. The system management is focused on aspects of the user performance needed from such components, such as bandwidth, latency, errors, and to enable configuration of settings required for a KVM deployment. For example, often video and audio sharing in KVM and AVIT uses IP multicast protocols. Typically, settings in network switches and routers need to be enabled for these protocols to work correctly, uh, such as the enabling of IGMP support or IP multicast forwarding. A system manager should be able to check the configuration of the network switches and ensure they are configured as required for this video distribution and to change them as required if possible. Other key features for system managers are the ability to centrally upgrade the firmware of components, the creation of users and their authentication, including the link to standard IT infrastructure such as Active Directory to support this. The setting of what users can access, what resources they can use and how. The logging of all activities across the system, including monitoring of security issues. Security monitoring is seen as increasingly important, especially for IP-based high-performance KVM. This covers uh, users logging in or failing to log in to the system to activities such as attempting to hack into components and break user passwords. Black Box's Boxilla is an example of a KVM and AVIT system manager. As with most system managers in the market, its key goal is to increase the IT manager's productivity. It enables end-to-end -end configuration and performance analysis, as well as security analysis across multiple sites. Being easy to deploy is important for a system manager. For example, Boxilla is delivered pre-installed on a one new server to make it easy to get it up and running. Most system managers provide a dashboard to give an easy cockpit for the IT manager to review key operational parameters of the KVM system. Here we show the Boxilla dashboard as an example. Its dashboard is broken into three key areas, status and performance indicators, active connections, and active logins along with an alert flag on its quick access toolbar. Boxilla generates alerts to notify the IT manager of events in the managed domain that may need his or her attention. For example, a critical alert is generated when a device goes offline, or a warning alert is generated when a threshold for network bandwidth a connection generates is exceeded. The dashboard typically shows the status of the devices. As we show here in Boxilla, it shows the number of devices uh, online or offline, the number of alerts broken down by whether they are critical warning or info alerts. It provides status of security events in the managed domain, such as failed logins on, or unauthorized connection attempts, which may indicate an attempt has been made to hack into a device. 
The performance indicators provide status on the number of active connections or connections that exceeded the defined thresholds, as well as bandwidth and drop frames. Many of the performance and status indicators provide min, max, and average summaries over the last 24 hours to allow the IT manager gauge how the current system status compares. Most system managers should provide similar indicators on their dashboard, as well as the ability to drill down to the next level. For example, on Boxilla, it is possible to look at the active connections or active sessions in more depth. Here shown is a screenshot from Boxilla's active connection page. Here the details of the active connection can be seen in more detail. The network traffic generated by the connection, the breakdown of the sources of this bandwidth between video, audio, and USB streams, the round trip time or network latency of the connection, other details such as frame rate on the connection or the drop frames experienced on the connection can be seen. The configuration of the connection can be examined such as what are the properties of the connection, such as whether a connection is private or shared, whether audio is enabled or disabled, for example. It is important that such tables as Black Box or Boxilla's active connections list is sortable and searchable. Remember, these tables may have hundreds of entr entries in a large configuration. All these features are designed to make the KVM and AVIT manager more efficient and productive. We need to make it easy to discover and configure devices in the managed domain. The more insight and diagnostic capabilities a system manager provides, the quicker an IT manager can find an issue and correct it. System management is increasingly used as a key criteria for the selection of a high-performance KVM system. So now to sum up what I've covered in this webinar. High-performance KVM systems are used in many applications and businesses today from broadcast post-production to emergency response and 911 centers, from industrial plants to defense and security agencies. High-performance KVM is evolving, driven by the needs such as the need for higher quality video with support for 4K and 8K resolutions with 10-bit color, such as the increasing use of virtualization and the need for high-performance KVM to access both physical and virtual targets, and by the increasing need for advanced system management that orchestrate end-to-end -end performance rather than configuration of an individual device. Customers' infrastructures are varied, and we often need different platforms optimized in multiple ways, be they direct, connect, or IP-based. But the system needs to be high performance and capable of being combined in different ways to tailor the solution to the customer's infrastructure needs in terms of functionality and cost. This combination often requires system management to enable efficient operation by the KVM or AV IT manager. Blackbox's DKM, InvisiPC, and Boxilla products were used as examples to highlight how these trends were evolving state-of-the-art high-performance KVM systems. I hope you found this webinar useful, and I thank you for listening. Please visit our website www.blackbox.com to find additional brochures and resources for you to learn more about our KVM solutions. I see that a number of questions have come in via our chat box. Let's now switch gears so that I can start answering them for you. Please give me a minute to start to review those questions for you. If you have not had time to submit a question, please do so in the chat box on your dashboard. The, um, the first question that I see is a question from Michael asking, what is the max resolution of IP KVM? So today, um, if I was to pick black box products, um, our agility system supports up to full dual link DVI resolution, which I think is 256, uh, 2560 by 1600 as a resolution. And the Invisib PC supports up to full single link resolution, which is 1920 by 1200. Um, both of them actually, both Agility and Invisib PC support both single head and dual head operation.
Um, the next question that I see is a question from Suzanne asking, what type of applications do you, uh, have you seen customers moving to the virtualized world? So um, I suppose that in summary, it, it, there's just many applications and across all sectors that are moving towards virtualization. In the broadcast sector, uh, we've seen playout machines, contest distribution, and lots of legacy monitoring applications moving into virtual machines as people explore how to move things to virtual machines. In training suites, we've seen older applications being virtualized to maintain, say, the investment in that training simulation uh, while retiring the older hardware. Um, I suppose you could name the application and there's somebody out there trying to move to a virtual machine somewhere in the world. And it really kind of is driven by um, the complexity making the move and the, the uh, I suppose, the CPU and GPU intensive nature of the applications. The more intensive the GPU um, uh, needs of an application, probably the, the less likely it will be virtualized in the, in the near future. Um, the next question I see is, uh, how does KVM help with resilience and redundancy? Um, KVM helps with resi resilience, um, which is keeping operations running in the face of failures um, by allowing a user to switch, say, to a backup resource if a computer goes down without leaving their desk. Uh, this is the essence, I suppose, of virtual access. Um, it's easy to switch around to a new computer without actually having to leave your desk. Um, H high performance KVM systems are adding features such as pooling to help the switching to an alternative quicker and without user intervention. Redundancy for a system is achieved in a similar way, helping users and operators to work around a failure, um, switch to a new target if there's an alternative physical computer or virtual machine. Um, this is particularly true because a, uh, an application has a lot of the same workstations in place and KVM can treat these as a pool and then use some redundancy built in to basically allow um, the user to be unaware of even what physical machine he's connecting to. So if something fails in the background, the KVM is taking care of that and hiding it from them by automatically switching to uh, a, a, a server or workstation that's actually up and running. Uh, the next question I see is, one of the barriers in KVM is the learning curve in operators in hotkeys and operation of KVM specific on-screen displays. Um, how is that being, uh, how, what are the trends in reducing those learning curves? Um, I suppose the, the big area we see there is people adopting touch as an aspect of this, which removes the need from learning the intricacies of a, a KVM OSD or a hotkey sequence as, um, the, the touch panel basically is programmed to interact with the API, the, the high performance KVM system. And basically all that um, configuration and operation is happening in the background with the operator needing to know how it's done. So they can drag and drop sources to a desired target on a touch panel. They can tap on an icon to get predefined configurations. So an example is, is pairing say a black box's control bridge with a high performance KVM enables this to be done quite smoothly. A uh, second mechanism we've seen uh, people using is programmable buttons or keypads, such as X keys, where essentially they program in the hotkey sequences. Um, you know, an IT manager would program the hotkey sequences into the buttons. So again, the operator doesn't need to learn any OSD or hotkey sequences. They just hit, hit button one to get the target, you know, uh, to one defined target, hit button two to get a, a second one. So most high performance KVM systems you'll see on the market will have hotkey, short keys, um, uh, to enable this type of operation. Um, then um, the next question you see is, can a BU manager be set up in a system with the ability to automatically switch in the event of a manager failure? I assume that's a backup unit manager or a box unit manager. So yes, um, basically there is the ability to set up a, um, a secondary system so that it can automatically connect in. Um, one of the things I didn't go through around in Visit PC, it's actually designed so there's no single point of failure, so that even if the, the manager like Boxilla goes offline, the system will stay functioning with the last known database in the system because each of the devices 
maintains a copy of the database once you log in. It download if it, it attempts to contact the Boxilla unit and then download that database to it locally. And then if the Boxilla unit goes offline, it'll stay using that database so users can log in and log out. Users can stay switching and back and forth. And then when the Boxilla unit man or unit manager comes back online, it'll automatically update the um, the statistics and the database uh, information to keep the uh, Boxilla unit um, up to date on what's happening in the, the uh, KVM system. And I think that's the last of the questions I've seen in my chat box, unless somebody had one they wanted to add now. Um, all right, so um, what I will do is end, I think, here. And I want to thank everybody for listening and attending today, and I hope you found it useful. Um, and if there's no more questions, I think we'll wrap it up there, and um, we can end the session here. Thank you very much.